here we go. I just want to make sure that we are live and we are sounding great because this is going to be an amazing live and uh, it's worth it that we sound good. Anyway, how are you, Alice? I'm great. Hi, Lenian. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Well, today, oh, thank you very much for everybody who's uh, watching us. Uh, today is another Wednesday, and today with me, I have Alice Marmieri, who is a personal branding expert. We're going to talk about personal branding today. So we're going to be talking about personal branding, but not only that, we'll be talking about the hows and whys. It's important to have a personal brand, especially for senior executives, executives and top managers. Um, so it's a very hot topic. And uh, I'd like to remind any, anyone who's watching today that we are welcome. We welcome your messages, your comments, your questions. And of course, join the conversation because uh, we'd love to to talk about this topic a little more in depth. So we'll be talking about personal branding, but also about you, Alice. And I'd like you, as I do with every of my guests, I'd like you to introduce yourself very briefly if you can, and to just give us a, a, a brief overview of what you do and who you work for. Yes, uh, hi, hi everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a really true pleasure to be sharing my experience. Uh, this is uh, one of the first uh, interviews I do in English, so it's uh, <laughs> going to be interesting uh, with a different crowd as well. Um, so I've, uh, well, I've worked in online marketing basically for more than 12 years. I've been uh, working in corporate um, the first years of my life, first uh, for Luxotica, the eyewear company. I was okay. uh, a brand manager, so really traditional marketing. I loved it. It was completely like um, a 360 degrees of what is really marketing. Uh, then I moved to Ireland to work for Google. And so I oh, was wow. an account manager there. I did, uh, yeah, basically uh, Google Ads uh, for a while and then specialized in the basically all the 360 degrees products uh, between Google Analytics, YouTube, uh, Google Merchant. So really got my hands dirty on the product stuff. Um, and then I decided that it wasn't um, a fit anymore. And I decided to quit everything and uh, come back to Italy was a tough and a very brave decision from what many people told me. Um, I opened my agency. We were doing a, a digital, um, yeah, basically digital consulting combined with the digital education. We were one of the first uh, uh, schools in Italy, also certified by Google. Uh, we worked with uh, many uh, big companies um, and uh, we basically were aiming really to kind of digitalize, to help companies, uh, small and medium companies, but even big ones to uh, kind of get into the digital world. It was uh, 2013 and it was uh, still I mean, Italy is also not really developed in that sense uh, right now. Imagine uh, seven, well, eight years ago. Gosh, yeah. It uh, was uh, a quite big challenge. Uh, since 2017, instead, I decided to move along on my own path with uh, being a consultant. I still went on to be a um, digital consultant, so I was still uh, consulting companies. But since uh, 2000, I'm not really good with, uh, dates but let's say 2019 I started to share my experience on LinkedIn I also had a YouTube channel so I started to uh, create content mm -hmm. and well I started to build my personal brand when uh, really at least in Italy wasn't really a thing yet and uh, people got interested they started ask me, asking me to help them and I loved it because I started to loving to help and support people that didn't really have a voice that they were professional Amazing. and they're really valuable in their industry but they couldn't communicate it so this is how I started to be a consultant for personal branding and helping and supporting professional in this way that's amazing. Well, thank you for sharing your story. It's great to hear people's stories and how they actually change their lives because um, I believe that we have this in common. Well, I didn't know you before. We met on LinkedIn yeah. and this is the, the, the common uh, channel that uh, gets to uh, meet many people and uh, give us a lot of opportunities. So 
I started again a couple of years ago. Actually, I had my LinkedIn profile open. I think it was in 2008 or 2009. I can't remember right now, but yeah. it was a long time ago and I ever, I've never leveraged it. So a couple of years ago, I thought, well, you know what, I'll give it a go and see how it goes. And then it just started uh, growing and growing. And this is amazing. So Personal branding is a really, really t hot topic right now. And I'd like to investigate it with you. Also, with your help, I'd like to give a little bit of a definition because a lot of people think that is A, a lot of people think that is B, but what is really a personal brand? Well, uh, the problem, Milenia, is that uh, um, there is a not uh, like an academic definition of personal branding. Of course. Uh, personal, I like to use the sentence from... Uh, Jeff Bezos that says that personal branding is what people say when you're not in the room. Uh, for me, it's the feeling that people have, the emotion that um, mm. arises when they think about you or uh, that people talk about you. It's, um, it's also the sentence that people use to describe you um, with just a few words to a third party. Uh, so it's really like this uh, sensation, this hit, this um, feeling that uh, people have when uh, when they think about you or talk about you. Um, so it's made of different aspects. So you have your personal image, so what people see, of mm -hmm. course, but also what is in, inside of you, what is the value, what uh, you provide, your experience, your competencies. Um, and uh, everything combined, of course, is how you communicate it to externally. So you could be the prettiest and the most a valuable person with the best skills in the world, the best offer, the best product. But if you don't tell anyone or right. no one hears, that's a problem. So right. it's a combination of basically everything you do in a public eye. And no one, despite being really against communication or saying that they really uh, don't like it, don't want to expose themselves, everyone has a personal brand. That's the fact. So that's given. You have a personal brand. Doing personal branding is actually taking care of this image, taking ownership of the image that you convey to the other people mm -hmm. and making it your own. So communicating what you want to communicate. Not of course. Maybe kind of uh, leveraging your strengths, not your weaknesses, showing what are your point of strength. Uh, but also exploiting the weaknesses because people don't want the super ears. They want normal people, they want empathy, they want to people to relate. Right, to. absolutely. That's a combination of really different aspects. That's why, Elenia, of course, it's hard to have a definition and people mm -hmm. can see it from different angles. Well, I completely agree with you. And on top of that, I would also put values because everybody in the world has values, whether it's more or less, uh, but we all have values. So this is also the way that we communicate. So we don't only communicate uh, business content, in, of course, in LinkedIn, um, but uh, we also communicate what we believe, our values, our beliefs, which are very important. And this is what I'd like to connect also because I talk a lot about customer centricity and uh, as you know, I'm writing a book about it. And customer centricity, a brand today really need to focus on its values. But those values that really, they need to be extended um, and um, made external by the employees of the company, right? So in this case, as today we are talking about managers and business executives, and so how those business executives are going to communicate with the, the public eye, whether are consumers or employees, how they are going to communicate those values, those brand values. And one of the ways that I believe, then correct me if I'm wrong, it could be also a personal brand. So I'd like to ask you, why do you think business leaders really need a personal brand today? I completely agree with you, Elenia. Um, values is one of the core um, that's on which that personal branding stands. Uh, what I like to use this uh, question also with my clients is, what do you stand for? It's really to have mm -hmm. this clear image of what, it's your purpose. What, 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 why you do what you do is right. like this the energy that you have inside of you, and the values is what everything is based on. So, going back to your question, of course, uh, um, 
for me, uh, we are seeing a shift in, uh, mm -hmm. in the business perspective, especially uh, with, the, with the digital age. Uh, people don't trust anymore companies. We know that yeah. most of the times we know the, the sentence, fake it until you make it. Most of the times it's yeah. just faking it. So we want to see, um, to have empathy, to see the other person, to be relating to someone. And who do we relate to? To the people of the brand. So a company is made of people. So right. from the top of management to the salespeople that we encounter in the sales, um, in the store, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so every person that we encounter can, needs to actually convey the message and the values of the company. Otherwise, if we have discrepancies, so uh, let's make an example. Um, there is this green movement going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And honestly, most of the times, um, uh, consumers are skeptical because it's a marketing trend. It's just could be, whatever yeah. you say. Yeah. Exactly. Could be a trend. So you need to make sure that everything you stand for, everything you do between mm, among the product, the, uh, the operations, uh, the way actually your uh, customer service work, everything mm -hmm. needs to be linked to that value. It cannot be just a slogan. It needs to be actual yeah. intrinsic value that you provide. So um, the same is for how you treat your employees. If you actually don't value their experience, you don't value uh, what they stand for, you don't uh, value their work-life balance, but in your corporate side, that's one of your values that you stand for, this is a lie. So actually consumers are not gonna, um, they're Bye. not gonna believe you anymore. Yeah. yeah. So the role of top management especially is to kind of, um, align with the company's values and make sure that the, the top-down um, teams are actually aligned with the values. And from the top to the bottom, the values of the company are actually brought up to the consumer because it's not going to be the top management that talks to the final customer. They're going to be mm -hmm. the face of, of the brand on LinkedIn, for example. But then there you go, yes. finally, they need to be, exp um, they need to be exp um, inspired, the final uh, the salespeople that talk uh, yeah. or the customer service people. So um, top management have a, a really, really uh, key role. On one side is to inspire the internal people. So to be mm -hmm. of example exactly. internally to bring up these values and make sure that also internally they believe themselves that these values are represented. And on the second hand, of course, bring them to the final customer, bring it to the public, to the stakeholders, because otherwise um, it's going to just feel like a lie. So they have a really, really big responsibilities on Absolutely. both sides. Absolutely. I also believe that companies really need to start humanizing their communication because in the past, you know, companies used to have this mask on, but also the suit suit executives used to have this the same mask on and um, we really need to start uh, conveying those values as you said but also um, perceive the the company and the CEOs or the top managers of the company as humans so those humans really need to breathe and leave those companies values and they really need to act as thought leaders in uh, in the field for either customers and employees. So for example, if I'm an employee of the company, I wanna to talk to that um, um, managers, for example, or CEOs, uh, LinkedIn profile, I want to see what they're saying. And of course, as an employee, we'll believe uh, and we'll really feel that um, that value and that communication coming from, uh, from that person, coming from that leader. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's exactly the, um, the example that we convey to these people. So um, at any level, so it needs to be, people don't trust anymore companies, they trust people. So it absolutely. needs to be a face. So um, from the founders, from the CEO to the yeah. um, C-level, of course, they need to put their face first and this uh, the face that they need to they need to put up 
cannot be a mask, cannot be a fake face. It needs to convey their authenticity, where their failures, with their mistakes, because people actually don't want to have the ears. They want to have mm -hmm. people they can relate to. Companies that uh, convey their actual values that they can trust for their children to build a better world. So the values are also shifting in the society. So it's really That's important good. that, yeah. uh, of course, companies so match those um, those values. And you need to listen. You need to uh, be able to also um, build a conversation. In which other context would you be able to have a conversation with a, mm -hmm. a leader, a CEO? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Social mm -hmm. are that uh, are that platform. They give that mm -hmm. opportunity. So it's an amazing opportunity to don't waste money on endless uh, customer research while probably just going on your on your LinkedIn, um, making a live with your audience is going to solve all your problems. You're going to just be there and actually listen to the people because they are there to, they want to interact. They, we are in a relationship, a kind of a society now, and marketing needs to be a relational. So in very anything true. you do, people need to be listened. Yes, and one very true. experience is actually uh, exposing yourself. This, takes courage, it uh, takes vision from the company because oh, obviously if it's a big company, uh, it's risky because you need to control it in some way. Uh, but I think controlling is actually the wrong way to, to actually do it in the proper way. You need to have uh, people that uh, are so linked to the, your core values, so representative of your core values, that they don't need to fake it. They just mm -hmm. represent it. So they right. just need to be aligned with it. And then you need to trust them. So controlling is not the solution, but most of the companies, right. they actually start from control. Do you mean someone who is in charge of uh, that CEO, for example, uh, personal branding? Is that, is that what you mean? Well, I know that uh, for a fact that uh, how does it work with big companies and social media? I'm not just talking about personal brand, just uh, mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're um, now with TikTok, with the stories, everything is kind of more quick, should be less polished. But I mean, most of the brands, especially in the luxury sector, but most of them, they always go through a really tough approval process. Gosh, so yes. people, like everything needs to be cleaned up and polished. Yeah. It's not yeah. really, they're, they're building up authenticity. But I mean, authenticity needs to be authentic. It cannot be built up. So um, you cannot, you need to let and trust the people to have their voice and to be representing your company. So you cannot have, marketing and PR and HR, uh, check every single thing that goes out. Otherwise, you're going to lose the power of the social power of personal branding. And then uh, the authenticity and the values and um, the failures, what the message is supposed to convey is going to mm -hmm. be lost. Absolutely. I can't agree with you more. And there was an old saying, I'm a marketer as well. Well, I, I used to be a marketer and now I do customer experience. Uh, and back then, back years ago, there was a, a, a say that uh, people buy from people, not just buy uh, purchase products, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but um, it's still valid, absolutely. isn't it? Is absolutely still valid. So before we before we started, I was researching some st statistics that I always love. You know, I am kind of like a data person, so yeah. I'd like to read them to you because I believe that they're really interesting. So this has come from Forbes, and he says eighty two percent of buyers are more willing to place um, trust in a company when the C suit is active on social media. Wow, that's amazing. 82% of consumers, which is basically, it proves what we are talking about right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really interesting, it's a quite high percentage, honestly. Um, I think it depends a lot on of the product, on the industry. Absolutely. Yeah, of course, yes. Um, but since we're in, on LinkedIn, uh, especially for B2B products, uh, mm -hmm. we saw it 
uh, among each other. I mean, what do we do? We both check out thoroughly our uh, each other's profile because mm -hmm. I mean, um, even the people you interact with are important and they're building on your personal brand. If on this interview we say uh, something wrong or something uh, disrespectful, it's gonna impact both of us. So Absolutely. it's really important that uh, obviously um, we know we well we we know the power and the risk of it. But yeah. um, the problem is that people pros and cons in everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. But most of the times people uh, focus on the cons, on the on the risk of exposing themselves. But mm. the great thing about personal branding is that you actually we need to free ourselves up from the idea of the perfect professional or the perfect life of the influencer. Yes. It's actually, it needs to be authentic. So the CEO, the C-level, they just need to represent what, um, what they are. They don't need to build anything else. They just need to be who they truly are. And companies need to trust them to actually do that. They need to leave it, right? Yeah, and they need to leave what they actually say in the website, which is all bright and shiny, which is amazing. But then, obviously, we want to see more ju than just that, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't trust anymore uh, bright and shiny. I mean, uh, uh, the, no. the Polish movement that we like, Absolutely. we are tired of that. We know that uh, Chiara Ferragni has a life outside of um, her own polished. Um, magazine covers she's mm -hmm. really like uh, also uh like how she progressed her brand how she evolved is also interesting on that sense and can be a good example of what is personal branding and the power of it and um it's um especially as i was saying uh, for b2b i think the role of c-level uh, executive is really extremely important because Even we more, want to it? trust i mean the at a certain level, certain companies are not even companies anymore. I mean, we know in most of, um, in many firms, in many examples in the consulting industry, a lot of people follow the people. Doesn't matter if you work for McKinsey, Bain, right. or whatever other company, you actually yes. trust the person who is behind that. So once the person leaves or goes in on its own, people are going to follow. And yep. that's the same yep. in the investing world. It's Completely not the brand. Agree. The power is in the people because they are the face. They are the actual product in the end, honestly. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. Other. Completely agree with you. And I'm a consultant as well. And the reason why I get, and I'm sure so many other people get more or less opportunities, but the reason why I get so many opportunities, whether it's speaking engagements or clients or whatever opportunities I get, is it through the power of this channel that I admire so much and is LinkedIn, right? But also putting the effort there, not just going there and visually uh, be there with a selfie or just putting content now and then, but it being constantly um, be there, right? So I'd like to steal a few tips from you. Um, if I'd, if someone would ask you, how do you build a personal brand, right, from a from an executive level uh, person, yeah. how would they do it? Well, here um, on the executive uh, level side, um, we have a bit more uh, work to do, because mm -hmm. on one side, the first step is being aware of who you are, what do you mm -hmm. stand for, what are your values, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm exactly who you are. You need to understand the strategy behind. So who mm. you are and who you want to be also, because may maybe it's also um, uh, you want to uh, build a personal brand that stands for something that right. at the current moment you are not. So this is the, the basics. But at this point, we need to combine it with the company because, of course, we cannot go in conflict. As I said before, it's important that the values of the leader are the same of the company, obviously. Yeah. So the communication is authentic. We are not gonna lose uh, any, um, and we're not gonna lie and we're gonna actually bring the actual value. So at that point, we need to find uh, basically um, an intersection between the two. What does the company stand for and what does the leader stand for? 
I would say if we are talking about a bigger company that uh, needs to build this strategy overall with their, let's say, top management team, it needs to, it's uh, strategic also to kind of identify uh, different leaders that stands for different values, different concepts, these different um, uh, different principles that the company wants to convey. Um, so in this sense, every leader kind of has its own um, different segment to uh, mm -hmm. to convey or the, this different voice to bring up yep, the, to the table. Because of course, personal branding uh, kind of answers two questions. Do we like this, uh, this company in case of this brand? Do we trust them? Do we think that it can actually solve what or uh, give me the value that they convey? And the second is, do we like it? Of course, if you are a personal brand, people can like you or not like you. The first mistake you can do is to wanting to be liked by everyone. So you need to stand on your feet and say, okay, not everyone can like me. So, but this is who I am and who mm -hmm. I, what mm -hmm. I stand for. Mm -hmm. And for a company, of course, <laughs> companies want to be liked by most people. So it's also strategic actually to build different characters after the, uh, the leadership team in order to have people that represent different and attract different types of clients. At this point, of course, at this point, we already introduced the topic, it's to um, identify the clients, the ideal client that every character kind of serves. And in these terms, of course, it's important as uh, any kind of business plan that you need need to know the offer for that specific uh, customer and the value that you provide uh, right. to them. Then what I normally do is to kind of uh, combine these two elements. And now we, it's important that everything put together, you build your positioning. So we put up what this, we build the final position between the character and what the, mm -hmm. uh, the leader stands for. And then after you have the strategy, so this is like the, um, this strategy can be um, brought up in, on LinkedIn, can be used on whatever social media or any platform. So this is the basic strategy of your personal brand, what you stand for. And it's also what, uh, if you are involved in a speaking engagement, what you stand for, what you communicate. So at that point, you start communicating. So you need to know the platform, you need to build up the content itself. And at that point, uh, basically, the strategy is to um, be aware, of course, of, mm -hmm. as we said, of your idea client, but also that not everyone that um, reads your content is at the, on the same uh, customer um, journey, on the same <laughs> phase of the customer journey. Of course, right. there is someone that just discovered you, someone that's already has Absolutely. Need, someone that is ready to purchase. So this is really important also not to speak to your customer always in the same way. So building mm -hmm. also a strategy for um, definitely for conveying that. I agree. Totally so agree this, with you. These are the, the, the main steps I would say for a personal brand for top executives are. So do you think that... Um, as, as an executive and a brand, because obviously they, they need to be intrinsic and um, work together and share the same content, you know? Do you think they need to share only business content or they need to blend all the type of content, like personal uh, things as well, in order to become more human and more empathic and et cetera? What do you think? Well, if we leave it just to the business, it's just gonna be a brand. So being a personal brand needs to be personal. So it needs to convey um, also something that is personal. They can be um, at different levels. It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be uh, sharing pictures of your family, obviously. It can be just mm -hmm. your personal failures in the work environment. Mm -hmm. You need, to, of course, to uh, define thoroughly um, what is the boundaries? Because uh, of course you also ask your uh, um, employees, your leaders to expose themselves. So it's important that um, right, right. it's uh, something they are comfortable to share. But at this point, what is important is really to know that this is a key essential part 
of the personal branding. And people are not there to judge. Actually, being more vulnerable is going to actually help you to uh, build empathy, to be more relatable right. to the people. Yes. yes. And it's going to make your personal brand and the final brand of the company actually more effective because this is actually um, what, um, yeah, what truly works and what really personal branding is. So absolutely finding the right way to uh, balance the two different things. So the professional, the business side with the personal side. It can mm. be done strategic. So if you're not confident in that to share something about your family, you can share something about your passion, about your hobbies, about uh, your, the sports that you love. It doesn't need to be something that you don't feel comfortable. But it needs to always kind of bring up something that um, is in some ways relatable. If uh, another solution is if you, people don't feel comfortable sharing a personal story, you can also still exploit um, customer stories or your team stories because mm. also for example if you are, want to be uh, seen as a tough leader or as an inspirational leader so a company that actually value um i don't know the the career of their of their employees you can actually use the stories of your employees and this is also gonna uh, make them proud of uh, you sharing them and connect and, um, yeah, and connect better. So it's going to work on different levels. So it's really important to build this strategy. There are really different ways to achieve the, um, the objective at the end. Um, but everything, even though it's important for me to also say this, Elenia, is that even though, uh, of course, it needs to be uh, strategic, it's important it's not fake. So, oh, absolutely. That's what so, we've been talking about. Authenticity yeah. is key, right? <laughs> yeah. So also in the, um, it doesn't need to turn because my, my, yeah, what I'm afraid of at a certain point, everything is going to turn into a hack. So hacking, marketing, hacking, and mm. everything needs to be hacked now. No, this cannot be hacked. Now we want authenticity. That means that you need, you you should not scale it. You should just um, spend time and really connect to the people. As you said before, it's not uh, even spending time on LinkedIn. It's not just about posting, just a one-way conversation. It's right. building up relationship. So it's actually, if you post, if a C-level um, post but then doesn't have time to reply to the comments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is not good i mean one of the most important things in any social media is not just linkedin but it's the comments the the engagement is the relationship interaction absolutely it's yeah. not just you shouting in a in a square uh, the loudest so to be heard by the most of the people it's actually talking and being listened and being listened and listening yes Conversing. Exactly. So we have a comment uh, from Ignazio Pisano and um, he's thanking us. Well, thank you so much, Ignazio, for, uh, for sharing your question. Um, what do you think about people productivization in LinkedIn and managers who don't have a LinkedIn profile at all? Let's break this down. So what do you think, Alice, about people who don't have a LinkedIn profile at all and those people who productivize in LinkedIn? Um, okay, I need to understand a bit better what Ignazio means with productivization, or I don't know if Elenia knows uh, it better. <laughs> what I, it I for. don't know. I don't know what uh, what it might be. Um, so, but yeah, Ignazio, please explain us what you mean by productivization. In the meantime, we can answer. What do you yeah, think about um, managers who don't have a LinkedIn profile at all? I come across with these people, you know, sometimes. Obviously, obviously, it's um, as I said, um, I told you before, I 50% of the time I work uh, as a digital marketing consultant for a uh, business, for a corporation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it happens, of course, that I work and I look for uh, suppliers or consultants or whatever. 
I mean, the first thing, I don't even open Google. Of course, the first thing is LinkedIn. If they don't have the profile picture, if they don't yeah. have their experiences, if they don't communicate, if they don't, well, actually, most of the times I'm happy if I find the profile. <laughs> there is a decent <laughs> profile. Uh, mm -hmm. So expectations are quite low. Um, but people without a LinkedIn profile, it's really, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to <laughs> expose myself too much, but it's a really important uh, aspect Step. to carry. Yeah. Yeah, um, on one side, also for yourself, for your career, uh, to build connections, it's uh, the first thing. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to hide behind a social network. It's like your CV. It's uh, like your, um, yeah, your business cards. Uh, mm. And people want to relate it. Why shouldn't you have a, a LinkedIn profile? Honestly, to build a nice, neat uh, profile doesn't require so much time to make it a yeah, bit nicer, sure. maybe a couple of hours, but I mean, it's worth the investment. You build yeah, a true. relationship. However, it, I, yeah, sorry, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, no, the last thing it was, um, it helps you so much in building your network, meaning not just to change job or to sell more or whatever, but yeah. to find new suppliers, to find a, a meaningful conversation, to have people that you trust to actually find new suppliers because i mean how much time do we uh, waste on finding valuable and um, great suppliers and most of the times especially in b2b it's word of mouth if you don't know who to ask to i mean where do you start and linkedin is a great platform to start this conversation and to have people that um that you trust i mean in this year i don't know how, what i would have done without LinkedIn in this year. I mean, for me, it was amazing. The relationship, the conversation I had, the self-development I built thanks to LinkedIn because I met so many great people that probably... Me too, yeah. I couldn't even meet at a... I mean, when we had um, events, what happened is that, yeah, you meet someone maybe in a networking event, you talk to them five, 10 minutes, but then that's, that's it, that's it. You need to, um, on LinkedIn, you really manage to spend time also thanks to the pandemic and having maybe a bit more time to have a, a, this conversation to kind of start to know people at a deeper level. That is not just on the business side, but maybe also asking more about the passion, about what they like, what, what do they mm. do, what are they struggle mm. for and stuff. Mm. So what I was going to ask is, um, back on the question, what do you think about managers who don't have a LinkedIn profile at all, but whether it's managers or employees of our, of our company, you know, um, some people don't like having a, a direct contact with social media or be constantly connected on social media. And, you know, they're a bit averse to that. So it's, it, it can be difficult from a, co from, like for a company perspective to push those employees to be there and to use their image in a way to interact with the world so how can we do this huh. i have a grinch on my face because it's like it's 2021 i mean this is for me um it's i don't want to say unforgivable but it needs to be uh, one of the prerequisites side it don't it doesn't need to be uh something forced as i said before mm. it doesn't need to be controlled it needs to be again something that sure. people obviously feel comfortable for uh, with so also companies need to find the right way to incentivate it to um build trust to make sure that if they screw up if they write something wrong they are not going to be fired because that's also the problem because people are worried to be exposed because then they're going to be pub um, yeah, punished or they're going to be fired or whatever. I yeah. mean, uh, it happens, of, of course. Um, so it needs to be built a system where people are actually trusted by the company. Mm -hmm. And on the other the side, um, also on the other side, I would say uh companies need to understand that there are different levels of digitalization and also comfort of the digital world. So right. 
they cannot pretend to convey the same message, the same trainings to all the levels of the companies. There are certain type of um, of managers or employees that they probably are less confident with the with the tool, and you kind of need to educate them in a way that um, makes them feel comfortable about sharing, being trusted, um, making them also understand the value that they can actually communicate and they can gain themselves in the company. Because I mean, there are, uh, I don't have the, the uh, data with me now, but um, there are a lot of um, interesting research on how uh, managers that actually uh, stand on their feet on social media, share and stuff, how much po more powerful they're actually in the company's conversation. Right, interesting. So it's uh, um, even um, internally, one of the most effective ways to um, use personal branding internally is to build in conversation also uh, internally with the company. Now, uh, LinkedIn has this feature that the company uh, page can uh, actually kind of um, create a community uh, for their employees. This is really a valuable message because- Oh, interesting. Also, um, one of the biggest questions that everyone asks is, uh, should I have a company page or should I just use my personal brand? How does right. how do yeah. people yeah. Um, interact? But the fact is that if you have a product, if you have a communication that comes even from your, from your brand, from your company brand, and is endorsed by your employees. Your employees stand by it. They support mm -hmm. it. They're cheerful for it. And they uh, are the ambassador of it. People are going to react much more effectively than just you being a brand and saying, oh, buy my product. So building a, a way, a system where your employees are your ambassadors, from the managers to the, the actual employees, the lower levels, uh, is actually what personal branding is all about, I would say, for a company. Nice, really good. So last thing that I want, so Ignacio wanted to clarify what he meant by prod mm. productivization in LinkedIn. He meant that uh, in LinkedIn, LinkedIn might be, might be seen like products in a store, like people okay. probably means like products in a store. Interesting, interesting view. I'd, I'd never seen this um, this word before. So <laughs> what do you think yeah. about it? I was almost uh, guessing that could be it. Um, well, personal branding is exactly the opposite. We are uh, trying to get out of what a product is and mm. build, um, kind of making it um, a relation in any way. It needs to be bringing values, it needs to bring emotions. So um, everything that is linked to a product uh, needs to kind of, how would I say it, um, left aside. We need to uh, take out what are the, um, the emotional parts of mm -hmm. what, uh, a product mm -hmm. or an experience. So for me, uh, personal branding is an experience. It's the part of the product that brings uh, this feeling, the, the emotion that is behind. Um, the product itself that it just brings a solution that is a code is like uh, buying a toothpaste. Yeah, okay, you need it. You <laughs> I like it. the metaphor. <laughs> so, um, um, so personal branding and uh, especially on LinkedIn, on B2B, uh, cannot be that, cannot be the productization. <laughs> yeah, we have saying. our e-commerce for that, don't we? Yeah, exactly. We need to build trust. We need to build the relationship. We need to be liked. I mean, the, the, the fact is you need to be known and you need to be liked. Otherwise, people are not going to buy your product. Mostly, of course, uh, your pricing point is not going to be the one of a toothpaste. So, of course, the emotional involvement in the purchase is going to be different. So it depends also on the product that you sell. If you're a salesperson for toothpaste, okay, maybe. It's fine. But still, um, you need to bring value. And personal brand allows you exactly to convey that, to bring up your value, the perception of your value. Mm -hmm. And this makes also your pricing possibility to be higher, obviously. 
Of course, because it complements the product. That's what we yep. want to do, right? Yep. Excellent. Do you have anything else to share with us today? Because we are closing down our live and uh, we don't have any more comments or questions. So if you have anything else to share with us, any tips that you want to give away, uh, then please feel free. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody and goodbye to you. And obviously, thank you as well. No, Elenia, if I wasn't so clear in this conversation, but just to make a final point is that, I mean, the power of personal branding, it's really uh, strong. And LinkedIn is an amazing platform for yeah. manager professional to do that, to build a conversation. So um, also... Um, don't think about it just in the utilitaristic ways of selling more. It also can bring you so much value, so much inspiration. Of some opportunity. I mean, if we wouldn't have built our personal brand, we never would have met. So yeah, um, absolutely. It's also, um, also doing something not just because you have always an objective, but also because you enjoy it, because um, you see. Um, yeah, you, you enjoy it. You see that uh, it brings value. It doesn't need to finalize it in a, a higher invoice or a higher price or more sales. It can just be just to be uh, and enjoy it. That's amazing. So, well, thank you so much, Alice. It's amazing that you've been with us today and you shared so much knowledge about why personal branding is a leadership must. And if everyone, anyone is interested in knowing more about Alice and her services, please follow her on LinkedIn. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Alice. Thank you very much. It was a, very, a true pleasure being here. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Bye. Bye.